In this video, I want to go over the latest Blink updates, which introduced some breaking changes. Let me go to the GitHub page where we can see the breaking changes. Just going to switch here to Skitty on the right hand side. I'm going to type GX here. That is going to take me to the releases page for Blink. And notice in the breaking changes section, mini that snippets and snippets presets. Also at the very top, notice that it says under important, the Lua snip source has been removed in favor of a snippets preset with the snippet source. So I was working yesterday and suddenly Blink stopped working. Why? Because I have auto updates enabled for my plugins. If that's the case for you and you would like to pin Blink to a specific version, let me jump to my doc files. Notice here at the top, you can specify the version 0.93 was the previous release before the breaking changes. We can scroll down here a little bit and you're going to notice that that's the version there. So let's go over the updates that I have applied regarding my Blink configuration since the last video that I released. First, you're going to notice that it says there, disabled LSP fallbacks. Let's jump back here. You're going to notice that under providers, LSP, I have this disabled, which I had enabled in the previous video, but I'm not sure why. Even if there were no LSP suggestions, my snippets were not showing up. I haven't tested if this has been fixed in the new version, but if it has, I'll just uncomment this. But for now, I have it disabled. Notice that the next item on the list here is removed Lua snip from providers and default. Let's jump back here to the left, ghosty, and you're going to notice that here I have the list of the different providers. Lua snip is not one of them anymore. It used to show here. Now I only have LSP, path buffer, snippets, that bot emoji, and dictionary. This copilot as well. But Lua snip was removed from here. Also, you will have to remove it here from default. Notice that it's not showing in this section anymore. And you will need to move that to options.snippets. So I'm in options.sources here. Options.snippets here is on the same level. And this is what you need to add preset equal Lua snip. That was the main change. This, what I have down here, did not change. This is what allows me to jump between Lua snip sections. So this remains. You shouldn't be removing that. The only thing that you will need to add is this and remove Lua snip here from the providers list. I had some special configuration in Lua snip. So that configuration has been migrated over to the snippets provider. Now you're going to notice that I have this should show item section. And also I have this transform items section as well. This used to be in Lua snip before. So I moved it here under snippets. And I also moved this other section here to reload the snippets. In case that you don't know why I have this transform items and should show items, let me show you real quick. I'm going to jump to my Obsidian repo, HyperTU. That's a key map that I configured. And I'm just going to type something here, a colon first. And this is what is going to show up my snippets. I'm going to type here YT. Notice that the list of my YouTube videos show up and I can accept one of these if I want to. Let's, for example, type here Blink. You're going to notice this Blink CMP updates. I'm just going to accept this suggestion. And the video is added there. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, if you're not following, I would highly recommend you to check the previous video, which is the one shown here, but it's also the one shown here. This is the first one that I created. This is the last one that was released a week ago. So if you're not following, go and check this video out. I explain most of the stuff that we're covering right now in detail there. So I'm just using these two functions should show items and transform items so that when I'm typing stuff, snippets are not added automatically. So if I type here blink, I don't see any snippets at all. But on the other hand, if I type here colon or semicolon, and I type blink, my snippets show up and they show up at the top. All right, so let me just delete this. And now we're going to mark this as done on the right hand side, this and also this. I already explained this. And I'm also going to mark this because I already went over this as well. I added new sources that have been recently added to blink. Let's jump back to the file here. I'm going to go back to my dot files, hyper.tj, and you're going to notice here under providers, we have some new options. Notice that I have emoji. So in case that you want to add this, this is the configuration. If we scroll up a little bit under default, you will need to add that here as well. Notice that it's in this line and also make sure that you add the dependency. It's listed here and the same for the dictionary that we're going to look at in a little while. Notice that it's showing up here and it's also showing up here under default. So how does this emoji work? If I scroll down here a little bit, here it is. It doesn't have much configuration. I just set the priority to 15. If I jump back to the other file that I was working on, 
And I'm just going to type here, for example, on a bullet point below colon. And notice that I have a list of emojis here that I can use. I can scroll through these and I can just accept one with control Y. It adds the emoji colon. I can add something else. This one, for example, colon and this one, you get the idea. So that's one of the new sources that I added the emojis. Just going to mark this as done here. The other one that I added is this dictionary. Let's jump back here to the file. You're going to notice that it's right below. If we expand this, here's the configuration. I gave it a priority of 20. It is enabled the max number of items that it can show. And I set it to automatically trigger only when I have typed three letters. Here are the options. Make sure that rip grep is installed in your system. These options, I just got them from the documentation. And here you need to make sure you point to your dictionary. I have a dictionary in my dot files. And the way that I obtained this dictionary is just from default Mac OS. If we scroll up a little bit, you're going to notice here to get started with the dictionary. I just copied from this dict words to my dot files. So that's how I got that file there. And I just referenced that file here. Notice that this is very useful as well. Documentation is set to true. For this to work, you need to have WN installed. In macOS, I installed it with brew install warnet. And I'm just going to show you how this works. You already saw it, I think. But let's jump back to my dot files or to my Obsidian repo. I'm just going to go to the line below. And let me type something here. I'm just going to type test, for example. Notice that it automatically shows me the definition of the word. If I type shift J, I can scroll down or shift K to scroll back up. Notice that you can get the definition. You can disable that if you want to. You don't want to have that definition. I can accept this word. I'm just going to type control Y here. I'm just going to go to the line below. And let's type something else just for testing. Bro got tests. This is not a word that I have typed in the past, but notice that it shows me this from the dictionary. I can accept this. Now remember that it's going to remember the words that you accept the most. So now every time that I type test, that word is going to show up second place all the time. I don't even know what it means. It doesn't have a definition here if we hover over it, but it came from the dictionary. So I don't know what's going on. Let me know down in the comments. What does this word mean? I'm curious. Notice that if we scroll down to other words, we're going to see their definition. Testing shows me its definition. Test, oh, it was above already. This one shows its definition as well. And uh, what else do we have here? Yep, you can get definitions in some of the words. Remember that what gives you these definitions is this WordNet. So you need to make sure that you install it. If you don't want to have those definitions, just make sure that you set this to false. In that part, the documentation is just going to be disabled. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly show you the dictionary that's done here. The key map for documentation is the same as LazyGit and Telescope. Okay, so if we scroll back here, you're going to notice that if I open LazyGit, I'm just going to type here Alt-G, it's going to bring it up. Let me go to my commits, for example. Let me go to one that has many different stuff, something that I can scroll over. This one, if I type here Shift-J, it's going to go down. Shift-K, it's going to go up. So... The same thing happens if I go to telescope. Let me exit out of here and let me bring up the open buffers that I have. Notice that I have blink here and I have telescope here. If I want to scroll through this file, I use capital J to go up or capital K to go up, capital J to go down. So that's the reason why here under key maps, if we scroll down a little bit, you're going to notice that I configured here shift K and shift J to scroll the documentation up and down as well. So that's the item that I have here on the list. So I'm just going to mark this as done. If you want to know how I manage the tasks the way that you see here on the right hand side, I have a video, which is this NeoVim task management released it a week ago. I explain everything in detail there. So notice how the tasks are marked as done and they are automatically moved to this section that I have down here. I can untoggle the tasks if I want. I'm just going to type here Alt X that untoggles it. And I'm just going to type Alt X again if I want to mark it as done. I can also search through all my completed and non-completed tasks using Telescope. I explain everything in that video. So notice the last item that we have here is auto save fixed. What do I mean by this? Let me jump back here again. Just going to go to my Obsidian repo. In the last video, when I inserted a snippet, auto saved interrupted my jumping. What do I mean by this? So I'm just going to go to the line below here and I'm going to insert a table, I'm going to insert a snippet. So I'm just going to type semicolon here and I'm just going to type here three times two. I'm going to insert this table and I'm going to hit control Y to accept this. You're going to notice that nothing happens. Autosave does not kick in. 
and I can easily jump between my different items, right? So for example, if I type something here, I'm just gonna type A now to shift to the next item. I'm just gonna type tab. Notice that it shifted to the next column. I'm gonna type B here. And if I wanna jump to the next item, I'm gonna hit tab again. It went down here. I'm just gonna type something here, for example, test. And I'm gonna type here, uh, test two. I'm going to hit tab, jumps to the next section, A, B, C, and I'm just gonna hit tab again, testing, for example. And if I hit tab here, I can jump out of the table. I thought this was an issue with Blink, but no, it's not an issue with autosave, but it involves autosave. Let me jump to that file real quick. I'm just gonna go back here to my dot .files. I'm gonna look for the file here, auto save. Here it is, just gonna hit enter here. And you're gonna notice that what I added, if we scroll down here a little bit, under this condition, this is the part that fixed it. Skip autosave if you're in an active snippet. So if I'm in a snippet, return false. So this is just in case that you're an autosave user as well. I type a lot of markdown and I just like my files to be autosaved. A lot of people don't like that, but if you do, let me know down in the comments as well. What else did I want to cover? Let me jump back to the other file. Let me see if I'm missing anything here. I haven't tested the rest of the providers here. Let's see. Um, all of them should be working the same way. I haven't tried that bot in a while. Let's give it a try. Just going to type here leader D and that is going to open it. And I'm just going to open one of these databases. This one, for example, which is a university course that I was taking. Let me scroll down to the bottom of this file. Let's see if this still works. Just going to write here and I should see the results. Yep, I do see them. So this still works. Let me jump to the other file. Let me just make sure that this LSP works as well. I'm just gonna jump back to Obsidian real quick. Under here, I'm just gonna add a bullet point and I'm going to type here two open square brackets and I'm just gonna type here macOS. Yep, it does show up there. This is one of my notes. I'm just going to accept this and let's see if the headings show up as well. Just gonna type here the pound symbol and uh, yep, it does show up. Just gonna accept this and everything is working as expected. So I just wanted to release this video in case that you were having issues with Blink after the update as well. All of my configuration is in my dot .files. So if we jump here to my dot .files, you're gonna notice on the main page, if I type T here, just going to look for blink.cmp. And this is the file under the NeoBean directory. If you like my dot .files, make sure to give them a star. Also, let me know down in the comments, what do you use? Do you still use nvmcmp? Why? Or you use Blink? I would also like to know why. Are there any providers or sources that are in NVMCMP that are not in Blink yet? That happened to the dictionary. And just in about a week or a little bit over a week, the provider has been created, I think, that by a community member. And we have a dictionary now. So it's evolving really fast. Let me know your thoughts. I'd like to know a bit more. Hope this was useful. I'll see you in the next video.